So, 40 versus 400. Okay, that may not be quite the exact cost for this or this, but it's actually pretty close. So today, we're going to be taking a look, as I've done with axes in the past, I'm going to be taking a look at what you get for 10 times the price. The CRK Pacific costing around 10 times as much as the little cold steel SRK. So let's jump into it. So one of the first things to consider when looking at a knife is the spec sheet. This is the thing that before we even have the knife, most of the times we're in the spec sheet looking at what the knife looks like, what its statistics sizes, making all the kind of pre-game guesses or guesstimations about this knife. So let's start with that, the pre-game, the spec sheet. So first off, with the CRK Pacific being the $400 knife, this knife has CPMS 35 VN steel, uses a essentially, basically, a Cerakoted blade finish, has micarta handles, and it comes in at an overall length of right around 12 inches. Then, looking at our not as awesome $40 knife here, we have SK5 Craton basically handles a and a more diminutive round 11 inch blade length or overall length. Sorry. So that's the spec sheet. Now, getting these two into your hand or getting them in person. What's the actual impressions? Well, no doubt the $400 knife leaves this little guy in the dust. And that's to be expected with the significantly higher price point that comes with this. Of course, the fit, the finish, everything about this knife screams very much an awesome blade. And, you know, whether it's just the overall look or the actual edge retention, the actual ergonomics, Everything is amazing. However, one problem I did have with it, or I had a few problems with it. First off was, if you guys have been around the channel and you know the mods I've made, I had to take this little forward guard or upper guard off. I also had to straighten or flatten this much of the blade. And also I had to round this little glass breaker area because the glass breaker was catching on everything and ripping things up. So. While the original appearance may seem quite awesome, in play, it wasn't quite all there. But I do believe I have now gotten this knife to where I want it. Now, one of the biggest things out of the box that I did love was how aggressively and amazingly well the micarta was textured. It is very comfortable and, once again, lends its hands really well to ergonomics. However, does that really make a $400 knife? Well, I'll leave you guys to decide that. Now, taking a look at this $40 knife, it certainly is less awesome, the presence, I think. However, I will say there was no forward guard to remove. The blade steel, when finally just scratching off the coating right around there, exposed a nice, sharp 90-degree angle for striking ferro rods. And overall, the blade retention of the SK5 was pretty good, and the comfortability in crafting was also there. I didn't have to make any modifications or any real texturing or changes, smoothing anything out. It all just was right. Nothing was wrong. So I have to say that initially, that is impressive. Out of the box, I would probably give this 40 to $400 comparison to our $40 SRK. Now, in long-term use, now some may argue, I haven't had this knife as long as I've had this knife, and that is true, but having used them in practice over long-term, after modding this knife to fit what I needed, I would say that I'm probably the most happy with the $400 knife, because even though I had to make modifications to it, one, this is the type of knife that I feel you can make modifications to because it's a knife that you're going to get and you're going to love and you're going to use for a very long time. So that kind of justifies making modifications to it. In addition, the overall build quality, there's no serious edge chips in the blade. 
there's no serious corrosion. The edge is still extremely sharp. The S35VN is holding up very well. It's performing excellently. Now, switching over to our $40 knife, it does a pretty good job. Like I said, it is very comfortable to use. However, I'm not type or I'm not sure I'm the type of person that if there was a type of flaw that I would really try to hone in this knife as being as inexpensive as it is, I wouldn't I just really wouldn't care. Now I will say it is a good knife out of the box and luckily it really doesn't need much more modifications other than maybe a new sheath. Definitely this sheath could serve to be replaced. However, it does the most important job of securely holding the blade, especially once you have it buttoned, as you can see here, you know, it stops the blade from coming out pretty well. However, so does this one. So anyways, as far as a $400 to $40 comparison, this is something that you really have to make up in your mind, a decision that you have to make, that you have to make for yourself. I think that really both of these are pretty excellent choices. However, you have to see within your budget and within your life whether you can afford a $400 knife. Now, in my personal opinion, I do love having the more expensive knives because they do tend to be tailored. They tend to be backed better with warranties and service. They also tend to be just a little bit more refined and what that payment is largely going towards when you buy a more expensive knife is the refinement and the service that are put into it. Because as you can see, these are both on the outside pretty excellent knives. Though this one is not staying on its sheath, both of them are pretty excellent knives. And honestly, if I had to go into a survival situation, I really wouldn't mind either of them.